Hi guys and welcome back to our ICE series. If you're new here, my name is Fatai and I'm an attendant hospitalist working in South Carolina. On this channel, I teach medicine and I discuss topics around medical education. So please consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button below and hitting the bell notification right next to it so you can get the videos as I upload them. In this video, I'll be walking you through some of the common IV fluids that we use in the ICU, when we use them, when we're supposed to avoid some of them, and some of the other questions surrounding how to select them. And uh, let's get right to it. When we talk about patients requiring uh, maintenance uh, of fluids, just generally, for example, patients that are MPO during a perioperative period or, you know, you really can't give them any internal nutrition, which is usually, you know, rare. You can always do an NG tube and stuff like that. Um, but again, if you're keeping them MPO because of a procedure, it's better to avoid any any you know, internal nutrition, whether it's via an NG tube or even a PEG tube. Um, in, in that case, you have to give them fluids to maintain them. Um, the idea of giving fluids to maintain them is based on the electrolyte needs, the free water need, and whatever extra thing you want to achieve. So with the free water need, it's usually typically uh, uh, about just less than a liter for every normal patient uh, would require less than a liter of free water in a day. So if you take that, um, they also may then need some sodium content in their, in the, in their nutrition uh, uh, in a day, which is about 3.4 grams, which is similar to what you know, you would normally get in a hospital, hospital diet, sodium content in a hospital diet, and you can add potassium if they have any potassium deficiency. And on top of that, you may want to add your D5. The reason why we add D5 in this case is to increase or to trigger some insulin release and prevent catabolism. If you don't put D5 and patients are, you know, hypoglycemic, they're forced to make glucose and catabolism will, tr will be triggered by glucagon to try to achieve that. So with maintenance fluid therapy, you add, you, you're given f some free water, you know, with some electrolytes and you know, obviously D5 is basically like free water. So the best um, fluid combination to use in that case, I would say would be to have about two liters of half normal saline, all right, with D5, you know, and you can add uh, 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 potassium depending on the potassium need of that patient. So basically you're giving, you know, your, elect your sodium in that case, which is about 3.4, like I said, grams per day, uh, uh, which kind of equates to what you normally get in a hospital diet. So my recommended fluids for uh, maintenance therapy will be half normal saline with D5. All right? You get it? Right. It's important to also note that, you know, D5, although it has some caloric contents, does not equate to nutrition, all right? So this we're just saying maintenance therapy for patients that's gonna be MP for maybe one or two days. But obviously you need to give a patient nutrition for them to recover. So if you need in IV fluid maintenance therapy for more than that, you know, if you're going to need it for more than two, three days, it's better to consider giving them some parenteral nutrition vibe, which is, you know, your PPN or your TPN. So keep that in mind. D5 does not equate nutrition. D5, I think, has about 400 uh, calories, and that's just nowhere near what the daily requirement for anybody should be, or even a patient that needs, you know, caloric, uh, uh, calories to recover. So please have that in mind. Finally, um, one of the other places where we would need IV fluids in the ICU, for example, is a patient with hypernatremia. I, I want you to understand the mechanism behind hypernatremia. Hypernatremia basically means the free water deficit because sodium in the blood really represents how much free water there is or there is not. You get what I mean? So when you have a patient with hypernatremia, it means that they've lost free water and you have to replace that free water. The ideal you know, replacement for that free water is your D5, which is basically free water. Uh, but in addition to the D5, if for example, patient needs volume resuscitation, you may want to give them some other fluids in addition to the D5. So LR or even half NS would be ideal in that case. So remember, with hypernatremia, it's free water deficit, you'd replace it with D5. Remember, these patients with uh, hypernatremia have free water deficit. Deficit, yes, but they may also require, you know, some volume resuscitation. So adding something like LR uh, to the D5 would be 
be ideal in a patient with hypernatremia. And, you know, just remembering the fact that LR, LR also has a lower concentration of sodium uh, compared to NS. Um, an alternative to LR in that case could be RFNS because of the lower sodium concentration. And in very, you know, very peculiar situations where they even need lower sodium concentration, some nephrologists would, con would consider using, you know, 0.2 NS and 0.3 NS and some of those fancy stuff. That's it for our lecture today on IV flows. I hope it's been helpful. If you have any more questions, you can leave them in the comment section below. You can follow me on Instagram because I have you know, lots of contents on there as well. We do daily flashcard teasers and, you know, uh, on there, the, my, my, hand, my Instagram handle is FatayMD underscore, or you can find me on the Instagram for this channel, which is Residence Cove IM. Um, I'm putting them up here. I appreciate you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.